Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. We're waking up with watches and everything is for sale. Reach out to me directly. I will be waiting for you. I am Tmaso at thewatchbox.com. We buy what we sell and we sell what we buy. We're always looking to build inventory. Sell us one watch or an entire collection. No upper limit. We will buy your entire collection of Breguet pocket watches. We make it fast, we pay cash, we walk you through it. Reach out to me. I am Tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. All right, let's start off with a watch that is universally loved. Originally launched in 1993, the Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meter is now the most enduring Seamaster design of all time. 30 years young this year, this watch arguably achieved immortality when Pierce Brosnan wore it during his James Bond years. Prior to this generation, or perhaps I should say this design, because there have been several generations, but prior to this design, the Seamaster generally was redesigned at least once every decade, sometimes more than once a decade, so it could never claim to be an enduring dive watch design in the mold of the Rolex Submariner. But now we've had this Diver 300 meter look with us for three decades, it's officially a classic. Getting a little bit closer, you can see we have this lovely chrome metalized brushed ceramic dial. We have blued applique indices. We have those famed bond skeleton hands. 120 click diving bezel, unidirectional, with a ceramic insert. Let's do a loom shot. You can see that the minute hand and the bezel pearl are a different color, making it easy to read them relative to each other in the dark. 300 meters water resistant like a sub, but it gets a helium escape valve like a sea dweller. Now the watch at 13.7 is actually one of the thinnest Omegas you're going to find, certainly in the sports watch lines, and it's got a 55 hour power reserve, master chronometer certification, and a display case back. A mechanically finished and assembled movement, but a good looking one. The clasp was given a big upgrade for this generation of Diver 300 meter as it gained a combination of a push button slider, which gives you incremental adjustment, and then the traditional fold-out dive extension that we expect on these Diver 300 meters. So you've got two different adjustment systems built right in. Twin trigger release, thick gauge steel, single fold. We have this lovely bracelet with polished intermediates. And I'll show you how this wears. It's a really good looking watch. Though a 42, because the end links are pivoted rather than solid, it wears no larger than the previous 41. It's a really nice piece. This is a watch for every day, and this is a watch for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters. My wrist, for those of you who are new to the channel, is 16 centimeters circumference. All right, so let's take a look at what else we've got going on. We've got a wonderful single year offering from H. Moser and C. of Schaffhausen, Switzerland. This is the Moser Streamliner center second smoked salmon and appetizing yes but you could see where the name comes from we have vertical striations we have a lacquered fume or smoked fade lovely polished metal applique indices we have ceramic based global light and a feature that moser has been slowly introducing across its collections for the last year and a half, which is this ghosted clear varnished logo, something I love. The case is only 40 millimeters in diameter and 12.5 millimeters thick. It's actually 12.4 as I measure it. We have the 70 style lapping machine radial grain, recessed case band with polish and satination, this wonderfully organic interlocking bracelet that's one of the best in the business in this class. And the nice thing is this is a watch inspired by the 70s, but not derivative of anything specific made in the 70s. It doesn't look like a 222 or a Nautilus or Royal Oak or an Oyster Quartz. It's very much Moser's own, just like the movement, Moser's own. Protected down to 120 meters, this is HMC 200, three-day power reserve, stop seconds, full balance bridge, free sprung balance. Moser making the tough parts of the movement, including the free sprung balance itself, the hairspring, and the escapement in-house. We have a rose gold rotor with three different finishing, and then we have a paw-based bi-directional winding system with ceramic rotor bearings and a movement that's properly sized for the case, which is always a feather in the cap of a watch from a true manufacturer that doesn't have to compromise on the match between case size and movement size. It's a great fit. It wears compact. It's one of the few integrated bracelet watches that I can tell you wears true to size. This actually wears like a 40 millimeter round watch and being less than 12 and a half thick, it will slide underneath the dress cuff. Now it does have some luminescence. It uses Globalite ceramic based loom. You can see it right there. That's what that looks like. 
Sticking with our bracelet theme, here's one that came out in 2019. This is a much more opulent take. This is the Chopard Alpine Eagle 41 Red Gold, which Chopard mentions is ethically sourced. I guess that's nice peace of mind. Screw down crown here. We have 100 meter water resistance as well. A spectacular blue metallic, deeply grooved spiral eagle's iris dial. And that's the idea there. We also have absolutely no shortage of luminescence. This is a very well-loomed dial. The bracelet is massively constructed. And you can see it has these little intermediate links between the primary links that are countersunk into the primaries to give double articulation between the links. As a result, the tolerances are outstanding, and this bracelet has less side-to-side -side lateral play than any bracelet I've ever experienced from any brand at any price. Pop open the clasp, you can see internally it's white gold, because white gold is mechanically stronger than rose. We have caliber 0101C, chronometer certified automatic winding, manufacture, hacking seconds, quick set date. It's a COSC certified Swiss chronometer with a 60 hour power reserve. The one watch wears beautifully. It's 9.9 millimeters thick, which means it's fairly thin and looks absolutely awesome on the wrist. This is a watch that's outstanding for a smaller wrist because the bracelet is exceptionally flexible. Because of the double articulation, it doesn't flare out too far from the lugs. And you can see it'll easily slide underneath the cuff. You could wear this watch on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference, just like the Moser. Okay, from Russia with love, definitely in the spirit of the season, this is the Konstantin Chaikin Green Halloween from the Wristmon series that started in 2017 with the Joker. This is a 2019 bronze and stainless steel limited edition of 88 pieces. It features a moon phase in the toothy grin, and then we have these googly eyes that actually indicate the time. You can see hours on the left, minutes on the right, so that's how that works. We also have this lovely sunburst grooved green rayon design, and you can see how the grooves feature differential finish so that they alternate between light and dark. You can see it says Halloween in raised relief letters on the bezel. You have the crown for making adjustments to the time and then a push adjuster for the moon phase. The watch is 42 millimeters in diameter on the reverse side. You can see there's a little holiday dedication. It is stainless steel on the back, individually numbered out of 88. Base caliber 2824, 36 to 38 hours of power reserve, automatic winding, and then Chaikin's own module on the top. He is an AHCI member that is the Cool Kids Club of Independent Watchmakers that includes all those famous people you've seen bandied on social media. Lovely color coordinated strap here and a simple steel buckle with the Chaikin logo on it. It's an easy watch to wear, absolutely no challenge in terms of fitting it. It looks bigger than it is. All the Wristmonds watches look bigger than they are, but you can see on my wrist it fits easily. No issues. It's even fairly thin. A very cool way to say happy Halloween every morning of the year. You might argue that this also has a little bit of a spooky vibe. All black, something a vampire might wear. This is the Debitun DB27 Titan Hawk All Black. This model came out in 2014 and only 27 pieces were ever made. It's in blackened zirconium, so it has a DLC style coating on the top that's thousands of Vickers and hardened zirconium underneath it. In fact, you can see since this watch was made, the only mark on it is a tiny nick on the bezel. Otherwise, basically indelible. The watch features spring-loaded floating lugs. There's a range between 51 and 47 millimeters. The watch is only about 12.3 millimeters thick, 43 in diameter. On the dial side, we have a radial date indicator, Debitune making dial, case, and movement all in-house to control quality, but also allow very small runs. A supplier doesn't want to hear that you want four cases a year or six cases a year. When you make your own cases, that's not a problem. You can see the dial has excellent depth and the deltoid style date indicator has a quick set. On the reverse side, you can see that it features a rotor made of a combination of titanium and platinum and a coil spring based version of Debitune's triple parachute shock protection. The rotor itself, the balance wheel. That's their own patented design. A silicon disc to resist the effects of temperature on timing. And then a white gold rim that is flush to reduce the effect of aerodynamic drag on timing. Also to maximize the mass in the rim. 
two barrels, six days of power reserve. Remember, this is a Titan Hawk V1. Titan Hawk V2 features a running seconds hand and a 60 hour power reserve. This features a much more upscale movement with a six day power reserve, and I happen to like the date. This is a watch that wears beautifully, including underneath a shirt sleeve, a really cool, stark, and imposing watch that's also exceptionally resilient against scratches and scuffs. And you can see it's got a model specific buckle that you find on the 28s and the 27s, matching the design of the lugs. Alango Unzona makes wonderful things, but it's also a brand that has seen its watch sizes swell over the last decade. A lot of folks believe that the breakthrough 1999 Dotograph was perfectly sized as created, and of course the original size was 39 millimeters, and that's what we have here. This is a 39 millimeter rose gold Dotograph. This is reference 403031. You can see it has a galvanized black sterling silver dial with rose gold hands indices. Roman numerals and date frames. Surprisingly, it is actually loomed. And this is a flyback chronograph with a big date. So let's fire up the movement, get it running. And you can see that this watch is a flyback. Reset and restart without first stopping. Great for gauging the speed of events occurring in rapid succession. Of course, you can start stop if you wish and there is a hacking seconds function. The watch features a double digit date with a little pusher adjuster. Let's make sure we're not in the date change danger zone. Turns out we were, it's a good thing we checked. The pusher for the calendar has the same sharp positive feel as the column wheel chronograph does. And this is exemplary feel. There are a couple of calibers in the business, the Zenithel Primero Caliber 400, Rolex Caliber 4131, and oddly the Breitling B01 that sit alongside this L951 movement for the best pusher feel on any column wheel chronograph. Lateral clutch, you can see we have golden tinged German silver bridges and plates, steel chronograph components, blued and black polished screws. Take a look at the clutch right there. You have a sharp interior angle, in fact several, on beveled steel, not easy to do, freehand engraved balance cock, although it's difficult to see here, you can tell that there is some mirrored anglage on both bridges and chronograph components, and there's satination on the wheels with internal beveling. Everything is superior. We have stripes across the few bridges that are present, and a black polished swan's neck fine adjustment mechanism. This one also comes with a additional cost option that was not standard, which is a full deployant clasp. Generally, long watches come with pin buckles, at least dotographs do. And of course, if you've got a smaller wrist like mine, you're probably going to want to stay away from the 41 millimeter dotograph up down. The 39 millimeter original right here is perfect. And of course, a watch like this is owned by Philippe Dufour, often described as the Duforograph. One of the few modern watches he actually bought for himself. Now I've got two of a kind for you from F.P. Journe. First, in 40 millimeters in rose gold, we have the Contiem Perpetuel. This is a watch that includes an aperture style calendar, which I absolutely adore. It does not require any tools to set. Make sure we're not in that danger zone right there. And so the way this works is you have a little index that sits coaxial with the hands. That tells you the leap year phase, the quadrant at center. We have a 120 hour rated chronometric power reserve, though in truth it'll run for 160 hours, almost seven days. Pull the crown out to its intermediate position, and you can see now I can set the calendar in ways that are useful. I should also mention that I have a hidden adjustment system for the month that hides underneath the lug at one o'clock and when not needed, it folds flush. A combination of rose gold and dark blue on the dial, 40 millimeter case on the reverse side, the movement in solid gold. The rotor's 22 carat, the bridges and plates are 18. Jorn beveling has gotten a lot better in the modern era of the brand, which is why you can now see that the once sharp milled bevels are nicely mirrored here. Free sprung, three hertz beat rate, five position adjusted. Jorn likes to brag that his automatic is the most accurate chronometer among automatic calibers. And so this watch really is quite accomplished. And I like the fact that Jorn went with a beautifully balanced 
easily legible perpetual calendar instead of feeling the temptation to shove a moon phase here. You also have a center-mounted set of hands, which makes this a little easier to read at a glance than some of the subdial Journes. And you can see it's a really good fit and thin. That's one characteristic of Journe watches through the eras. Even with the larger cases, they tend to be quite thin for what they are. That said, I can forgive this one a little bit of extra girth because the 2013 99-piece sterling silver and rose gold F.P. Journe Tourbillon 30th anniversary, known as the T30, it is one of the all-time greatest Journe watches. In fact, there was a time when Journe realized he wanted one, and he went to someone in the industry to get one. I don't know who that could possibly be, but Journe did, in fact, buy one of these for himself after realizing he should not have sold them all. Now, the watch is based on the design of his original 1983 pocket watch, which was his first timepiece, which is why the dial here looks more like a breguet. This dial is exactly what you would have seen on his 1983 Tourbillon chronometer escapement pocket watch, which incredibly was the first watch he ever made. Yes, Tourbillon chronometer escapement pocket watch. Now it gets more exciting in profile where you can see that the case as well as the case back has been treated to a barley corn guilloche turned on a lathe in sterling silver so the side starts to tarnish and age and fade. Each one is individual. Now we also have a pocket watch inspired hunter case back which reveals the largest tourbillon carriage Jorn has ever put in a wristwatch. Two barrels each with satination and black polished cock caps. You can see them in steel. We have the largest blued screws I've ever seen in a watch. And uh, the movement is solid gold, but it's finished to look like a pocket watch, specifically the pocket watch created by Jorn. The only real change is that this is better finished than the original. And Jorn went with a conventional Swiss lever for the escapement on the tourbillon because the chronometer escapement was not as suitable for a wristwatch. So this watch here is sold, but if you love it, we have two. So we do have one of these available right now as you're watching the video. Reach out to me again. Remember, I am tmasso at thewatchbox.com with all of your purchase and pricing questions. Well, what could possibly top that? You know I like to end with the ultimate watch. Well, how about a demigod among men? How about Philippe Dufour? And I can tell you that this Philippe Dufour Simplicity 34 is one of the first 10 ever made. Developed in the late 90s, originally with the Japanese market in mind, the Simplicity was offered in two sizes for approximately 20 years in its original form. Philippe Dufour made no more than 10 per year during this period across several different case size and dial variants. There's also a 37 millimeter model. This is the 34, and I've also seen enamel dials. This one is the hand guilloche, and Dufour is absolutely open about using suppliers, which is why you see the name of the dial maker, Metalem, on the dial base. And you can see the guilloche, a wonderful rose lathe pattern, explosive. We have dart style, faceted, rose gold indices, tri-Arabic numerals, faceted, Dauphine style hands. We have a proper Philippe Dufour strap, and on the reverse side, the movement that, well, he didn't become famous for this movement, but I would say that he became a household name among watch nerds because of the movement in the simplicity. Now, although the watch is 34 millimeters, the movement is 30, so it's fairly large for the case size, and it fills the case back. You can see this is true welded lug case construction, laboriously handmade, lugs welded to case, and then hand finished. The movement has extraordinarily broad Cote de Genève. That's the sign of the finest striping. You can really see how luminous they they are. We have a freehand engraved plaque, Philippe Dufour, Swiss made, 21 jewels, and then the number plate is also freehand engraved. You'll also note that the plate is held by blued screws, these two plates. Those are the only blued screws on the movement. The rest are all black polished with chamfered slots circumference and mirrored heads. You can also appreciate that the plates have been satinated on their top and beveled on their edges. Speaking of bevels, Dufour uses exceptionally thick plates so he can draw the bevels broad and mirrored over the edge. His, his bevels extend up and over the top of the bridges. You could see these sharp outward points, the devil's horns over the center wheel, and this extraordinary vintage inspired black polished steel click and click spring. It's both in one. We have a matte finished ratchet wheel with micro beveled teeth and then a solarized barrel underneath that. We also have one, two, 
three, four sharp interior angles, the fourth of which is actually executed on the steel cap to the escape wheel cock. So that interior angle where the two bevels meet in a sharp crease, that's been executed on steel, very hard to do. You can also see that there's beveling and then there's beveling. This anglage is on a different level and it's been duplicated in all of the jewel sinks, as you can see, that partridge eye effect with mirrored internals. And yes, there's engine turning on the base plate, but even the parts that are difficult to see, like the anchor of the escapement and the bridge for the anchor, these parts have been micro-finished to a standard that you can only really appreciate when you get 10 to 20 power close to the movement with a loop. It is the best winding movement I've ever experienced. The sound and the feel, nothing comes close, not among wristwatches. It beats away at 18,000 vibrations per hour. It has a very traditional, big balance, beating slow, a center wheel architecture like a pocket watch. And it's an overcoil hairspring, which is blued on a free sprung balance with all the adjustment done using variable inertia blocks on the balance wheel. And again, a pretty impressive 52 hour manual wind power reserve. And just a pleasure to wind. And a pleasure to set. I would say this watch has less dead angle and slop in the setting than any wristwatch I've ever reviewed or experienced. Even the slightest finger pressure begins to move the minute hand. This is as good as it gets, but incredibly, this is not the last watch in the show. What could possibly outshine a watch by a demigod among watchmakers? How about a god? See that name there down at six o'clock? That's not a brand, that's a man. Delivered in May 9th, 1801. This 61 millimeter Breguet pocket watch features an enamel dial, fired blue steel Breguet hands, Breguet Arabic numerals, and you better believe an engine turned case band and a movement by himself, Abraham Louis Breguet. This featuring an enormous slow beating balance. And you could see, beautifully preserved to an extent that's rare, even in wristwatches made in the middle of the 20th century. This timepiece, which has survived the ravages of years, fully functional, complete with its original winding and setting keys, represents the ultimate flex for a watch collector. You wind it with a key and via the center of the hands, you also set it with another key. You can also see some of the individual cocks for the train and the wheel design present on the Breguet tradition watches of today under the modern Breguet brand. Now this one right here, you can see is Breguet number 731. And you can see exquisitely executed and beautifully preserved. They don't come much more impressive than this. And again, 61 millimeters. The knurling on the side or the engine turning is to make it a little bit easier to grip. This is pretty much the peak of Everest. That said, gods don't live on Everest. Gods live on Mount Olympus. And this is an 1805 Breguet souscription, cylindrical escapement, pocket watch, subscription order, solid gold guilloche dial. You could see knurling on the case band, a single hour hand to mark the time. The watch, as large as it is, allowing easy discernment of time from minute to minute. And you could see it's set once again using the key at the center, the dial, featuring real rose lathe and straight line machine work, the dial of gold, like the case. You could see the knurling in profile to make it easier to grip. On the reverse side, an explosive concentric pattern. And when you open it up, does this look like something you've seen before? How about la tradition, the Breguet tradition pocket watch? Well, this is basically it. The wristwatch tradition draws from this pocket watch, this train architecture featuring the barrel at center and then the great wheel, third wheel, fourth wheel, escape wheel, and the balance. And note the presence of Breguet parachute steel shock protection, one of the very first shock protection systems ever created. I don't know how well you can see, but there is a full temperature compensated blued hairspring that will actually slide inside its stud holder 
and compensate as it cools or heats up. This is, again, wound using a key, and it would have had a 35-hour power reserve. It features a ruby cylinder escapement, the finest cylinder escapement ever made, with a hardened steel escape wheel and a handmade micro-cylinder out of ruby. Even the edges of the ruby cylinder, which is under the dial side of the watch, have been rolled and rounded to reduce friction during the impulsing action. Of course, this is the high watermark of the cylinder escapement, which marked a huge step forward over previous escapements in that it allowed the watches to be far thinner. You could see the wheel spoke style, very similar to what's present on Tradition. And you could see the blued screws and the blue steel parts, they haven't aged a day. No scratches, no scuffs, there's no shiny metal showing through them. The bevels on the edge of the bridges are outstanding, and you could see everything that's frosted here would have been frosted with an acid bath, the oldest way to frost a surface. Breguet, hand engraved. You could see the numbers likewise, hand engraved. This pocket watch, 1602, one of about 700 souscription pieces made between the late 18th century and roughly 1805. This Breguet, exactly as it would have left the master's shop. And you can see the dial held on by a single blued screw that holds the dial on. If you were to take the dial off, you'd see a double stop works that is designed to stop the watch when it's no longer keeping good time. You would also be able to see under the dial the ruby cylinder escapement. These cylinders were cut by hand by specialized horological jewelers whose only stock in trade was cutting these ruby jewels. In combination with the hardened steel escape wheel, they could last generations or even like this one centuries. What did this cost? Well, if you were to subscribe back in 1805 to get this watch, it would have cost the equivalent of, and a lot of them did go to England, so roughly 600 pounds. And that comes out to about 43,000 pounds today, which is over 51,000 US dollars. So that's what it took to own the best back in 1805. Breguet et fille souscription cylindrical escapement, my favorite kind of escapement, parachute shock protection, temperature compensated blued hairspring, centrally mounted barrel with stop works, all of that and winding by key, 61 millimeters in diameter. When you take it out, everyone's going to see what it is. This commands respect, and it should. This truly is the peak of Olympus for watch collectors. If you like this, reach out to me. I am Tim Osso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.